Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. So in this video, we want to work our way down from the uh, four hour chart. I just want to highlight again the risk that we have about um, the continuation of the bear market that can still work out. The good things about this structure to the upside and the flaws and we can talk a little bit about strategy as well. But before we dive deeper into the analysis, first a few words about the sponsor of today's Bitcoin video, Chart Prime. Chart Prime is a service that provides specific trading view indicators. There are five specific and unique indicators that you can only get through Chart Prime if you sign up to one of their plans. These are based on quite complex algorithms and formulas and can be helpful in identifying trade setups, which means they can provide additional signals that could support your trading. Indicators can, for example, also be useful to support Elliott Wave counts to give more confidence. Of course, you don't need to apply Elliott Wave to use Chart Prime, and the combination of their indicators alone can provide trade setups and signals as well. They currently offer a 30% limited time discount, so if you are interested in this, check it out. Of course, bear in mind that no indicator works 100% of the time. Here's an example of the Bitcoin chart with one of the range indicators. This indicator combines various indicators in itself so you can adjust it um, to your needs. But it basically shows your range resistances, different support resistance levels based on different time frames, and it categorizes them based on their relevance. And this indicator provides you with dynamic support and resistance bands to which the price is reacting. And if you're interested in checking it out, make sure that you use the link in the video description and on their website. You can also read through testimonials and you can join their Discord community, which you can join in case you have any questions about how to use those indicators. Okay, so let's talk about where we are here. So the entire move down of the all-time high um, came obviously into this range. We've got a nicely defined range here for Bitcoin, came down in what could have been a wave three here in June, yeah? There is no evidence that um, the bear market is already over because the move that occurred since June could just have been an A wave to the upside, a B wave down and a C wave to the upside. This is fairly likely. I would even give it a higher probability that we will get one more lower low for Bitcoin. Yeah, um, I would even give that a higher probability than the bull run has started. Okay. I was asked today, probability wise, you know, this is really hard to really give a probability here. But um, what I would say, it's around about 60%, I would say, you know, I'm leaning towards continuation of the of the bear market. Um, in the end, we will really only know that or have a really good indication. And I always need to say, no, you never know in these markets. Markets are uncertain. Anybody who doesn't understand that should not be in these markets. Yeah. Because you, you, you get, you know, you, you otherwise will assume that things will need to turn out as planned, which sometimes isn't the case. In fact, quite often isn't the case in these markets. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, technical analysis can really only be the tool. Uh, it, it does not necessarily give you, it probably will not give you your, your plan, your trading plan that, that you need to de develop that, um, your strategy and the tactics around it. Yeah. So the whole tactics around trading, if you don't have that, the, 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 you know, the technical analysis will not really be useful for you. Or well, it will be useful, but you still need to know how to apply it and how to use it for trading. Because yeah? TA, <coughs> TA and trading are two different things. Okay, so uh, that's very important. But either way, you know, we, we can talk about that a little bit in this video. But here, this is still a fairly likely scenario that um, this is just a C wave to the upside and we come down in five waves. Why is that likely? It's likely because the move up looks corrective yeah, of June, of the June lows. Um, the move down is in three waves. It, it's absolutely clearly in three waves. So it could just be an ABC in a B wave. Okay. Um, and the move up, yeah, the move up is in five waves, but <laughs> not a crystal clear five wave move. Yeah, we have a five wave move, one, two, three, four, five, but the wave five is very short. It really only did the absolute, the bare minimum, the bare minimum. And I think I highlighted in the previous video that Bitcoin normally uh, reaches a higher extension level in a fifth wave. This is the shortest fifth wave that I have seen in a long time in Bitcoin. And I know I'm very, very, sometimes very picky and I'm always sometimes, well, sometimes complaining about the little things, but they make a difference for me. Yeah, you want to pay attention to the detail. And um, 
I believe that makes makes a difference because you need you need to know what to look out for. I mean, if if I tell you that Bitcoin normally reaches a certain extension level, in this case, that would have uh, taken it to around twenty six k, um, and twenty six point seven would have been the next target. It didn't do that. Then this is for me a reason to doubt that we have a proper five wave move up already. Yeah, so we need to be aware of that but let's first finish the higher level assumption here the fi higher level scenario could still easily be bear market not over yet so um we, d does it mean i will i will bet on that no of course not you know it's all about you know what what can you know what are the scenarios and how do you develop your strategy out of that so of course the low could have also been in here but the structure to the downside looks unfinished but it, it is possible, yeah. The bear market low, that's why I highlighted here an alternative end of the bear market. Um, because we have a possible five wave move up, it's not perfect, but this could of course count as a wave one. And then in the next price drop, if we get into this green support area between 17,567 and 20,377 in an ABC correction, then. Um, this is a valid one to set up and if this holds then we could rally in a third wave yeah and this would be a great setup for new all-time highs um now again also this could give us a larger abc i don't i don't even want to go that way at this moment because it will confuse people um but in the in the first instance this can give us a one two setup yeah if this support area holds then um we can get a third wave but if we break below 17,567, we're going to drop lower and we'll continue most likely with a bear market. And that you can you can expect something. I mean, if we drop below 17,567 and then retest this area and lose these lows, <laughs> I mean, then you can expect a lot of um a lot of panic. Yeah, a lot of panic. And I will in this in this situation strategy wise i will be quite aggressive with going go you know buying buying spot for the long term put on my ledger yeah um adding to my long-term portfolio and i've always said that i wait with larger positions until we see a new low and i still keep cash aside actually a lot of cash aside yeah um for these lower prices what happens if they never come? Well, then I will just use them for other trades, you know. But this is um, this is important. And if I say more aggressive, that doesn't mean you know <laughs> I go full leverage all in. I it, it would still be um, with leaving cash aside, yeah. So always, you know, you you need to understand sort of that. You know, when I say it, it's it's more aggressive, it still is less risk what many people would take yeah i've just i've just over the years and over the cycles become very much focused on risk and very much focused on keeping cash and trying not to lose and um i think that's that's important yeah but yeah um so i will scale into this area highlighted today exactly in the channel membership what exactly i'm going to do but i'm going to scale in here if we lose this support area I will um, buy lower as well because these will be long-term positions. I mean, even here in the area 17.5 to 19.2K, these will be amazing prices, especially in the long term, yeah? And if we get a bounce from here to the upside, then I will sell some of that in resistance. Yeah, And then we'll probably come down again because when we move up here, after we hit this area, we'll come down again. Yeah, we'll get a one-two setup. So I will sell, take some profits, buy back in. That's sort of um, the idea. And interesting is that you can also get here, and this would be the idea, you know, let, let's say that the bear market low is already in, you know, you can get this sort of inverse head and shoulders here, left shoulder, ahead, and then this wave two will be the right shoulder. And then we've got the neckline here is the August high, and we can break out from there. So this is sort of interesting as well. Maybe just out of interest, what would be the target of that head and shoulders inverse? Yeah, um, That could take us to just roughly sort of here, 35K. But that's sort of the first target, yeah. But this, these are the two higher level scenarios. So I would say there's still a decent, decent chance that the bear market is going to continue, which will surprise a lot of people, I believe. But we need to be prepared for that. Um, but I will still scale into this support area because 
you know, I don't know, it could turn around here and we go to a new all time high. Therefore, this will be an amazing reward to risk um, ratio in this green support area for the wave two. But be aware this could fail. Yeah, until we have a reversal signal that this can easily fail. So these are the two higher level scenarios. Now we go into the lower level um, because now we are left with a question. Um, do we have five waves up? Yeah or not. Um, so at the moment, we seem to be holding this yellow support area. Let's say we are still in the fifth wave. Then as I said to you before, if we hold this yellow support area, this is a support area. Um, this could be a wave one to the upside, W, X, Y to the downside. And as long as we're holding this area, these, these FIPs, either the 78.6 or the 61.8 FIP, at 22,184 to 22,842, we can get a high probability third wave into the, let's say 28, 29K region, then a fourth and a fifth. And that would give us a clearer wave five, but it would also give us quite a lot of an extension, yeah, um, which could take us into the 30K region eventually. So this here is one possible setup, a tradable setup. Um, I don't have enough clarity that a low is in, but we've seen quite a bit of a reaction today. So, um, I can't remember if we actually talked about that in the previous video or if I just updated it on the chart, uh, this descending wedge uh, that we saw here and we made a new low. Yeah, I said before I disregard that wick, it's only on Coinbase. I, it's not valid, it's not on Binance. Um, but yeah, we had enough. We have enough waves down to consider the, the, the low could be in. But now we need to see a five wave move up. We need to see a small one, two setup at the moment. Uh, I just don't have enough information for that. Um, would say we might be able to count an impulse to the upside, but it, it looks a bit like a three wave move. I don't know, it's 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 not reliable at this stage. But either way, you know, if we if we basically now um make a higher low here, break above that high, and then take out this uh twenty three thousand three thirty level, then I think this it's a really good confirmation that a low has been made here. Yeah, and that we are going to move higher um at least with a certain probability okay in this extension of the fifth wave um, then you need to know if we break below 22,184 then we have a chance to hit this first of all this support area here between the 38.2 and the 50 percent retracement between 21,536 and 20,377 yeah because then we are probably morphing into the scenario where we've got here this a wave B wave, C wave, and we'll get into this wave two support area. So we've got two scenarios. My primary expectation should be clear. You talked about that. It would be the extension at this stage because that's the setup we're in. Uh, if that support fails, we're going into the larger support. Um, yeah, and these are the two main scenarios. There is a, there is a third one that um, is also valid, but it doesn't really in the short term make any difference um, that's the assumption that we never finished, and I talked about that in the previous videos, that the wave four never finished, that off the high here back in February, this wave three high, we came down only in an A wave. This was a B wave because it is so short. Yeah? This was a B wave and we're now coming down in a C wave. And here we hit, basically you could say this is also support for that scenario. Um, and But the only difference would be that we don't get an extension, it would get basically, we would then start wave five again um, and reach higher targets. So these are the three scenarios, but the last one is sort of, I wouldn't worry too much about it because it is sort of more like the, how we actually label it. The support levels are very similar. So um, at the moment I'm focusing primarily on the extension to the upside, but if that fails, then we're left with the question, did we actually get five waves up? Yeah. Um, and if we did get them, we should find support in the wave two. And if we didn't get them, we will lose this support area and head down lower for the continuation of the bear market. So eventually, I guess for most people, it will be the most. This will be the most relevant support area because here it's where we will see a decision if um, the bear market is over or not. Yeah, and and how Bitcoin is going to move probably for the remainder of this year. But we're not going to head into this area, you know, within two or three weeks. This will probably take a month or so or two months to play out. Because if you look at the length time wise of this wave one, then, yeah, it will typically take around, let's say, at least half the time, 60 percent of the time of the wave one to to play, you know, to to to, to develop this wave two. 
yeah, okay, and that's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.